early November, the coal board went on the offensive. They targeted the Hatfield picket line that no one had crossed since August. Quietly, the coal board contacted men they thought might be ready to crack. Terry Stalgis was one of them. Circumstances was I'd just got divorced. I'd just bought myself a little boat and that had emptied my bank account. So I was flint skin. No money, what am I going to do? Can't keep going down to my mum's expecting her to feed me all the time. Because she was going on 70, 60, 68. So I went back to work. I had to go back to work. So on the morning of November the 8th, Terry Stalgis met a bus taking men through the Hatfield picket line. The police had been told trouble was likely. What we were told that morning was that it would be a highly territorial thing. I expected that if there'd been no police in the, in the, in the intervening period between the August and November, that we would be highly resisted. As you look top, the sky would go dark with bricks, bottles, pieces of railing, all come just raining down on you. I was in the miners' strike for most of the 12 months, and these two days will always stand out in my mind, completely different in the level of intensity, in the level of violence, the missiles, the sheer determination. When the bricks started flying in this direction, we had two tin picket huts here. And I can remember us diving into them and blocking the entrance so that the police that were stood here couldn't dive in it as well with us. You know, they weren't having any of that. It's a form of patriotism. That's what Hatfield was like. It was a form of patriotism because we were defending that. We were defending the pit gear because that represented something. And that represented something that we were going to lose. Well, this was their pit. This was their livelihood. But of course, I was equally determined that we were not going to be driven out of that pit. Mounted police charged through the village streets. They were met with a hail of stones and catapult shots. The police responded with mobile patrols. One of those patrols came across Harry Harl. So I'm coming along here, messing about, giving it out again. I looked up and a van pulled up. I realised then I were in serious trouble. You're a picket, no excuses, you're getting some clog. I slipped and went down. One of the most horriblest feelings you can ever want with a van load of coppers chasing you. They were thumping me, but they weren't hitting me with trungeons. They were hitting me with fists like that, down on top of me. In handcuffing Harry Hall, the police smashed the bones in his lower arm, leaving him in plaster for six weeks. They came to knuckle and they came to crush and they really attacked and really made us have it. The police officers did what they were trained to do. They stood their ground, they were well disciplined. It was quite a scary thing and they, they did a good job. Bill King's successful tactics marked a turning point. Hatfield, Maine had cracked. A trickle back to work started at Hatfield. But the police officers were not celebrating. You couldn't overlook the fact that in front of you there were hundreds and hundreds of young men who were probably about to lose their jobs. Nobody in, in the buses, not in the PSU and the police, were unaware of this fact. Most of us, including me, we were all working class boys. We all knew what the situation would be. 
you could look around the situation. There was no, there was no other work. This is a village with a pit in the middle of nowhere. 